Peter, you're making a lot of waves today. Let's start with the ITV. How exactly do you know it's in production? Um, well, what we've done is we've uh, spoken with Taiwanese and Asian component manufacturers, and many of them have to report on a monthly basis. And the reports uh, out of those companies, especially specialty TV component makers, film, um, uh, specialty film makers, and even folks like JDSU indicate that this thing's gone into production. JDSU, in fact, said they launched a new, they have a new customer for their uh, gesture control modules. That customer is uh, not a game console, and it's focused on the living room. And we obviously think that's Apple's ITV. Now, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, has repeatedly said TV is just a hobby. But you think this could really be on the market before the end of this year? It, we think an announcement's likely before the end of the year and, at the worst case, availability in Q1 next year. Interesting. So Bloomberg News has also reported that Apple is in talks with cable companies to build a new set-top box. What do you know about this, and how does this filter into the TV plans? We actually think it's part and parcel with the TV plan. Uh, we've argued over a year now that Apple's not going to compete directly with uh, cable and existing pay TV prov providers. Rather, they're going to take those streams and they're going to enhance them, uh, allow you to pause and move live TV amongst devices, amongst locations, and create interactivity. So this ties in perfectly. Remember, a set-top box, all the componentry can easily fit inside a television. That's been our game. And so we think Apple is using this as part of negotiating tactics with the uh, Comcast and Time Warners of the world. And ultimately, we'll uh, hook those services up to uh, an ITV. So are you saying that this ITV set, on this set, there will be no difference between live and on-demand programming? Correct. And that ties in uh, with the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg Zone reporting. Uh, that what Apple's trying to do is really uh, blend all this content where you really don't know whether it's live or not. The only way you would know it's live is if there's some kind of a big event uh, created around it. Okay, let's move on to the iPad mini. You think this is also in production and could well be out by the end of the year as well. What exactly do you know about it? We think it's uh, 7.85 inches. Uh, that's the um, dimension or the, the vertical that's uh, uh, diagonal, sorry, that's referenced in a lot of the code work that we've uncovered. Um, and if we look at uh, what the production data that's coming out of Taiwan, uh, we're seeing significant jumps in iPad build plans, uh, specifically from some of the component manufacturers that we wouldn't have expected it, such as a WinTech or TPK, who we don't believe are in the iPhone 5. And so therefore, seeing them have such good results to us uh, and some other data indicates that the iPad mini is in production as well. So what about the next iPhone? Obviously, we've seen a big slowdown in iPhone sales from Apple over the last quarter, potentially this quarter as well. What makes you think this is really going to be the biggest handset launch in history? Because we believe there's a lot of pent-up demand. We think there are 170 million smartphone subscribers, <clears throat> 30 million of which are iPhone subscribers, that are coming off contract, meaning they're coming to the end of their two-year terms. And they'll be eligible for a free upgrade, meaning they don't have to pay anything more than the subsidized price and there's no prepayment fees or early upgrade fees or anything like that. And we think a lot of those folks, based on our survey work, uh, want an iPhone 5. Uh, we think the iPhone 5 will be thinner, taller, have uh, significantly faster processors and uh, work on LTE. Now there's been a lot of talk today comparing Apple to Facebook and this flight to quality. We talked about the stock earlier. How do you see Apple shares performing in the run up to these product launches and through their releases? Well, we think um, the uh, the difference is pretty stark. Um, uh, Apple, we think, is absolutely hitting its stride and has probably the big, biggest uh, product launch uh, cycle window that we think we've seen in the last 10 plus years. Uh, in the next six months. And so we think that that's going to propel the stock higher. We upgraded our stock price today to 900 from 800 and kept our conviction buy uh, rating. So we think the stock's going to uh, close at uh, $900 uh, within the next 12 months.